Welcome to another episode of Steel Creek Explorer. I'm your host, Jeremy Stout. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the pet store buying food for our critters here at the Nature Center and ran into one of my friends, TJ. And TJ told me he would like to see a whole episode on the park's turtles. So TJ, here's an episode about turtles in Steel Creek Park. Of course, turtles are vertebrate animals. Uh, and of course, they are reptiles, and they all belong to the order Testidines. And turtles come in many different shapes and varieties. Even in Steel Creek Park, we have entirely land-living tortoise-like turtles that we'll introduce you to later. We have large scavenger turtles like uh, this exceptionally large snapping turtle. And we even have streamlined predatory hunters of fish, uh, like the eastern spiny softshell turtle that can actually swim and even run on land incredibly fast that are active predators and, and are capable of swimming down and catching fish. But of course, there are many different characteristics that uh, define turtles. Of course, no turtle in the world has teeth. They are all toothless, but most turtles have pretty large cavities and bone attachments for large jaw muscles. Uh, so even small turtles can oftentimes deliver a pretty powerful bite. And even though they don't have teeth, they do have a bony beak that in life is covered by this sheath that's actually made of keratin, the same material that your fingernails are made out of. And this sheath, which covers the bone, can actually make the turtle's beak razor sharp. So many turtles have a very powerful bite and a very, very sharp beak, which can actually uh, clip through bone and flesh just like a pair of kitchen shears. Really remarkable. Uh, but of course, when most people think of turtles, there's one thing that always comes to mind, that, and that is the turtle's shell. All turtles have a bony shell. Some of them are bigger than others and some cover more than other parts and not all turtles can pull into their shells, but every turtle has a shell on the back and a shell that covers the front of the body. And of course, the back of the shell is actually made out of the turtle's spinal cord and ribs. Of course, both of those are bone types that you have in your body, but in turtles, the spine and the ribs make up the shell that covers their back. And because turtles have uh, these hard, nice, preservable hard parts, uh, they also tend to have a very rich fossil record. And even though this turtle fossil didn't come from inside Steel Creek Park, from all over the world we have a rich fossil record of very well-preserved fossils of turtles going back many, many millions of years. And oftentimes they look very similar to modern turtles that we have living in the world today. So now we'd like to take you outside into the woods and into the lake and introduce you to some of these turtles that live in Steel Creek Park. This looks good. Right here, we are in prime box turtle habitat. What we have are shady, moist woods with lots of undergrowth, lots of small little green things and fungi growing, but we also have patches of intermittent sunlight throughout. This right here is the perfect place to find wild box turtles. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. All right, well, we've got our first sign that we're in prime box turtle country right now. We've actually got the remains. Is there any more to him? We've got something that can be found in the woods sometimes. We've got the shell of a box turtle, and this one still retains uh, a couple of the, the scales that go on top of the bone. These are called scoots. Uh, and, and we can see that this has actually been outside quite a while. Most of the spinal cord is, is already gone. 
And you wonder, well, it's bone, you know, shouldn't it last forever? Shouldn't it turn into a fossil someday? Well, the truth is it's very rare for bones to turn into fossils in the woods because there are lots and lots and lots of things that love to chew on bones and to eat bones, especially rodents. Mice, voles, chipmunks, and squirrels have a hard time finding calcium in their, in their diet of nuts and seeds and plants. So they seek out deer antlers, animal bones, and especially box turtle shells that they can find in the woods. And if we look closely on this shell, we can even see where those little front incisor teeth of squirrels and chipmunks have been chewing away on this shell from the inside out. So let's go ahead and introduce you to a live box turtle. Now this isn't a wild turtle. This is one of the Nature Center's box turtles. We call him Fluffy. We've brought him into his natural habitat to show you what they look like. Now, of course, box turtles tend to be, to be very skittish. They'll oftentimes pull completely into their shells and it's hard to see their faces. This way we can show you what the face of a box turtle looks like. And of course, there are a couple of ways to tell whether a box turtle is a male or female, but one of the easiest ways, and it works almost all the time, not quite 100%, is the color of the eyes. And you can see that Fluffy here has reddish or orangish eyes. That's pretty typical for a male box turtle. The females almost always have gold eyes. Now, of course, Fluffy here is fairly used to being handled by the Nature Center staff. So he's not gonna to be too shy to show you his face. And unlike the sharp beaks of snapping turtles and soft shells, box turtles have a very, very wide mouth, which is just super for foraging on plants and mushrooms and insects that they find walking through the woods. Now, before we take him back to the nature center, let's see if we can find a wild box turtle in these woods. Oh, we've got a trail right here. There's, it's kind of hard to see what it might belong to. But if you look at the end, aha, we have a box turtle. Yeah, this little guy right here is exactly what we were looking for today. And notice when I, when I picked him up, the first thing he did was pull into this shell completely tight. Of course, this is what we talked about and introduced you to at the Nature Center. This hinged bottom shell is what we call the plastron, uh, which in all turtles is, is in the belly. And then on top, you have the carapace, which protects them while they're inside. Box turtles have this really neat hinge in the middle of the bottom shell that allows them to seal up inside their shell uh, almost air and water tight. This little guy, we're gonna go ahead and turn him loose and see what we can find in the lake where most of our turtles live. Welcome back to Steel Creek Explorer. I'm your host, Jeremy Stout. And of course, we've already introduced you to the one turtle species we have in our area that is terrestrial, that lives on land. But most of the turtles in our region live in the water. They are aquatic. And right here on the, on the Causeway Bridge is one of the best places in Steel Creek Park to view wild aquatic turtles. Well, we know that on a warm, sunny day like this, the turtle log here in the lake is going to be a great place to find aquatic turtles. Well, even though they live in the water, how do we know that we're going to find them on this log? Well, you probably know that turtles, like all reptiles, are ectothermic. The word you might have learned in school was cold-blooded. That doesn't mean that their blood is cold. It simply means that they have to acquire their heat from the outside environment. They don't make it internally like we mammals and the birds do. So for turtles that live in the water, staying warm and getting the body temperature up is a unique challenge. So aquatic turtles oftentimes exhibit the behavior known as basking. 
This is when they crawl out of the water, which is their primary environment, and on low trees and limbs that are hanging in the water in full sun, like we have right here, this is a great place to see them warming up. We'll also see turtles that are just under the water surface hovering around the tree. These are turtles that are coming and going and finding good places to, to bask to warm their temperature. And of course, if they get too warm, they can simply uh, slide right back into the water and adjust their body temperature that way. Of course, while most of our turtles in our region are aquatic, not all of them are readily seen basking like the sliders we already showed you. And so to, to learn more about our populations of many of our species in the region, we have to trap them. Uh, and this is a turtle trap. It's entirely humane. It allows us to trap the turtles without harming them. And the way it works is very simple. We set this up in the lake uh, and we leave a, a large portion of it out of the water so the turtles can breathe after they become trapped. Uh, we have a very sophisticated bait that we put in here. It's basically a peanut butter jar with holes punched into it that we'll bait with anything from catfish dough uh, to uh, rotting fish, chicken livers, all sorts of things that turtles might be attracted to. And we just leave it in the water overnight. And turtles are attracted by the scent of the bait and they make their way into this funnel shaped region of the trap. And when they get inside to check out the bait, then they get tangled up in the mesh and they can't get back out. Uh, but of course, this is humane. We, we never leave them in there for long and we always uh, get them out safely and unharmed when we're finished taking our measurements of them. So over the past couple of weeks, we've set this baby out with some uh, rotting fish material inside the bait holder. Uh, and what we found is actually pretty interesting. Well, after nearly a week of having the trap set out on the lake, the very final day, we went to go collect the traps, and lo and behold, there was a pretty decent sized snapping turtle in one of them. Well, of course, whenever we trap a turtle from Steel Creek Park, we take some necessary measurements and we record that data for future use. Oftentimes with turtles such as snappers, their overall weight or their total length from nose to tail isn't all that informative. Some of the most important data comes from the length of the shell. So with all the turtles we collect, we take a midline measurement down the middle of the back portion of the shell and we take a width across the widest portion of the shell. This particular snapper had a shell length, an upper shell length, of over 20 inches, which made him considerably large for many of the turtles we find in the lake. One thing that's interesting about many of the snapping turtles and soft shells where they don't bask uh, nearly as, as often or as fully as some of the other aquatic turtles, uh, oftentimes these turtles are found with leeches on their bodies. Well, we've introduced you to a lot of our resident turtles that we have here in Steel Creek Park. Now we'll take you back inside the Nature Center's lab and give you a little more information about these shelled reptiles. Well, welcome back. We're in the lab of the Nature Center and we saw a lot of turtles in the park today. And if you'd like to come to the park to enjoy turtles, make sure to do so with your eyes only. As we mentioned, many of our turtles can deliver a nasty bite and some of them can even carry pretty detrimental diseases to humans like salmonella. And we'll also mention that it's actually illegal to keep a pet turtle in the state of Tennessee, whether it came from the wild or from a pet store. You can't have them in Tennessee. Of course, a great place to view turtles when you come to Steel Creek Park is not just in the wild, but also in the Nature Center. We have a number of wild turtles that are now kept in captivity in our Nature Center, which include the native species that are supposed to be here, like the painted turtles, the snapping turtle, and box turtles. And we also have some of the exotic invasive species, which uh, compete with our native species for resources like the very common red-eared sliders like we saw basking on the log and also river cooters and yellow-bellied sliders. Well after you viewed captive turtles in the nature center like Fluffy here, be sure to get out into Steel Creek Park where you can be the explorer.